The following program is sponsored by Team Reba of REMAX Metro East Side and Eric Osnes of Homebridge Financial Services. Welcome to Open House with Team Reba. Each week, Team Reba will be bringing you a roundup of real estate and mortgage news, along with information about the local Puget Sound region, highlighting some of the best and brightest entertainment options, family events, neighborhood highlights, and local business interviews, so you can feel right at home in the Pacific Northwest. Welcome once again to Open House with Team Reba. I'm Reba Hass of Team Reba, Remax Metro Eastside. And I'm Eric Osnes from Homebridge Financial Home Mortgage. Happy weekend. Yes, happy Saturday. Here happy we go. Happy summer. I know, another, another summer day here. Here, open House of Team Reba talking about real estate finance yeah. while you're out there doing your thing, <laughs> whatever doing, that might be. <laughs> what a wonderful generic way to say that. <laughs> okay. Well, you know what? There are lots of things to do because we talk about them all the time. There's hiking. There's being out on the water. There's, I mean, even though we have all the stuff going on with COVID because yeah. some of the stuff has opened up a bit. It has. We've got a little bit more flexibility. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and, and I know you've stopped complaining so much about not being able to shrimp and crab. No, so. because I have been able to. I know. Thank <laughs> so, goodness. Yeah. Thank that goodness. Calm me down. <laughs> and uh, so far, yes. so good this year, too. Actually. Yeah, I've seen some of your Facebook posts and Ellie's cooking, and I must say I'm a tad envious that I somehow do not get to partake along with you. Um, but, that, you know, That hey. will soon be rectified <laughs> here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no. You're I, like, I don't, I don't share. We vacuum pack all of our crab. <laughs> occasionally one <laughs> sneaks into the pot though so that's good oh well, yeah but um I, you know what i was on uh, looking um where were we were somewhere uh picked crab mm-hmm. was like 41 dollars a pound yeah and i'm like oh oh yeah holy cow yeah that, oh, it's great that you do it and then you pack all that stuff up because considering well, the cost of having a boat and the gas and the oh <laughs> maintenance no it's it's definitely no, right, have you ever is, done that calculation this is not Mr. a profit Mouth deal guy? oh yeah no i have not done that calculation <laughs> but because i, I don't want to mental health for you <laughs> that's right that 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 is priceless to the, the rest of us <laughs> yeah the, the math does <laughs> not pencil out yes no, but like the pe- having yeah. you be calm is it's like when I bought my first thing. boat, you know, I was telling my uh-huh. neighbor, hey, I bought a boat. And he goes, well, everybody's entitled to make a mistake. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so. You know, actually, my uh, yacht club had uh, shared an article recently that where there was a guy um, kind of remarking, um, and, I, and I agree with him 100%, of the frustration of that saying of, the best days of being a boat owner are when you buy it and when you sell it. Yeah. And we've talked about I that. I disagree. It, well, I know, I know. And that's what this guy was writing. He goes, then you've clearly never been a good boat owner and you've never been right. using your boat in the way that it's really intended. Because yeah, yeah. everyone I know absolutely loves it. They're, well, I mean, they're not, I mean, yeah, they have stuff that happens, but they're always just like chomping at the bit to get it running again or fix the pump or the whatever, because they uh, can't wait to be absolutely. back on water. Right. And there's even a book called The Blue Mind mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. talks about the whole actual physical and mental and connection that we as humans have, because, I mean, because we're mostly made of water, so mm-hmm. we are affected by it. That's right. And so, you know, and anyone I know is always just like, oh, yeah, I'd love to go do that. I'd love to go do that. Oh, for sure. Well, for me, it's it's sharing that with friends. You know, friends and family getting Absolutely. out there and, and just watching them. You know, the first time they mm-hmm. see a, a, a crab pot coming up out of the water. Oh, you yeah, know, especially because you're really and, good at crabbing, and so yeah. it's usually full. It's. it's I still it's remember your good. GoPro from last summer. That was amazing. <laughs> oh, my yeah. gosh. What goes on when that crab pot lands at the bottom of Puget Sound oh. and how quickly? That's a busy place. Down super there. busy and especially yeah. when you had it on the higher speed watching yeah. crabs like zipping back and forth <laughs> yeah trying to figure out how to get in hilarious. get into the thing yeah um, it was interesting to watch the funniest thing though the first the first thing in the pot was actually a big uh sun star starfish yes. so he was you know hooked onto the the bait yeah because the crabs yeah. were there for a while but couldn't figure it yeah, out yeah once once the first one got in there though he sees that starfish and he starts pinching the thing oh yeah like, get he's out like, of here he's like get off my food get off my food <laughs> little does he know so, yeah right <laughs> No, there's a yeah, that's right. Soon to be food yeah. himself. Yeah, the, the starfish got the last <laughs> laugh out, out of that deal. Yes, he did. <laughs> but uh, no, it's really fun, and and there's so much going on out in Puget Sound this year. We've got whales. I've never mm-hmm. seen so many um, uh, porpoises, uh, dolls porpoises, uh, yeah. swimming out in the in the sound. That, that I saw them in the spring. You know, yeah, it's a good healthy sign, I think. Mm-hmm. You know, so they're out there. Of course, we have our you know overabundance of seals and sea lions and everything, which. Um, you know, the, the uh, salmon fishery is off to a start. So, you know, it's just fun to see all the activity, everything going on out there. 
and uh, mm-hmm. lucky to well, be able to take Washington, advantage of it. I mean, that's the whole thing is like it, the boating industry has been affected this year because like Seafair, you know, being called off, Fourth of July events not being the same, you know, that kind of stuff. However, people are adapting. And that's one mm-hmm. of the things I do love about folks out here is they do adapt. And that's one of the things is that um, – so a buddy of mine who's uh, – well, actually, I have several friends who you know sell boats. Um, but they have been selling like mad. I was just going to say there's actually some national statistics yeah. and boat sales are They're way off up. the chart yeah. right now. They're off the chart and so are RVs. Yeah. Yeah, people. any kind of camper, anything mm-hmm. where people can go self-isolate but somewhere mm-hmm. else. Exactly. You yeah, know, yeah, like yeah. within their families or friends and things. And so, I, honestly, I kind of like it. Well, and I, I would Other always... than there's people who won't know what they're doing. Because one of the things those articles no. has, has also said is people are buying a larger boat than maybe they have experience for. And they said, oh, yeah, you can just learn in like an hour. And I'm like, uh, no, 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 that no, is no. not true. I was just going to say, <laughs> you know, please, please, please take a class, join Power Squadron. Yeah. Uh, well, and learn. you're required to have your boating ID certificate. Card. Yeah, and actually... It's a good test. You yes, know, it you, is. I learned a lot. Card, I learned a lot yeah. about how much my ex-husband did not know about boating <laughs> and how dangerous it was that. to be on the water with yeah. him. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm a much safer boater. <laughs> I'll, I'll do that when I'm out, and, and especially in Puget Sound. I'll have like a friend, you know, say, hey, you want to run the boat? Yeah, sure. They think, mm-hmm. oh, it's easy. Yeah. So then they're, they're cruising along, and then you, you've got boats coming to you from mm-hmm. behind you, towards you, from oh, the yeah. left, from the right. It can be a little there's nerve-wracking. There's a ferry boat. You know, there's, there's a sailboat, mm-hmm. and it's kind of like – Where do you go? It becomes sort of a, a math problem. It's yeah. geometry. Right. You know, can I go in front of this boat? Can yeah. I, do I have to wait and go behind? Am I going to change right. course? Well, and the thing is, is also when you're out on those lanes and you're on the, with the, the VHT the and lanes. the shipping lanes mm-hmm. – that, I actually had that happen. So my friend Chris, when we were on a sailboat, you know, we're cruising along just six knots, right? Typical on-engine sail, sailboat. And he saw this big ship from mm-hmm. a long way away. And so he starts hailing them mm-hmm. because he was doing the math in his head. He's like, I'm pretty sure. And I remember that captain kind of looking at, you know, like, why, why are you calling us? Why are you hailing us? And sure enough... Mm-hmm. We were we were spot on. If we hadn't been paying that close of attention, right. we you know we veered and went to their you know stern and everything else. But that would have been kind yeah. of muddy, it, muddy close, it, 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 <laughs> and and that would have been ugly. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, a forty-one foot ship against a big old cargo ship. Mm. No, no. Tonnage mm. always wins. Yes, it does. <laughs> so I can Same appreciate the, the person who knows what they're doing. <laughs> That's right. Yes. So anyway. Anywho. <laughs> yeah, I know. But I'm just but, into boating right now. But yeah, no, the... Um, it's summer. Why not? Boating is, you know, the boat sales are, are doing well. Mm-hmm. And uh, so are house sales, they, if I can just say absolutely. so. Well, that was actually going to be what I was going to ask you. Yeah. So they're going nuts still. Still nuts. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Even before I came into the studio today dealing with three multiple offer situations. One, where I'm the listing agent, and two, for buyers. Mm -hmm. And it's still not so. And they're from all over. Mm -hmm. I've got Port Orchard, Bonnie Lake. uh, Where's the other one? Trying to think where the other one is. We had one up north. Uh, Oh, Federal Way. Oh, Federal Way. That's the other one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we just, I mean, it's been nonstop. Yeah. It's just been, and, and here's the thing. The one that's over in Port Orchard, was a patience game because we'd been on market for three weeks. Mm-hmm. And so still waiting. Like we had someone who kept, okay, can I, can I throw some tips out to our <laughs> listeners here on these things? Find an agent who can do math. All right. That's, that's always good. That's, you'd think are you that'd talking be. About, are you talking about multiple offer type math? No, even understanding closing costs and how to write a financing addendum okay. and how to do the math involved when oh there's. Boy. Multiple credits being considered, like there was one offered by my client because of you know something that needs to be taken care of post closing, but then they had a VA buyer and they had a certain like she had no idea, no idea what she was doing, and she didn't understand VA loan processing, she didn't understand the closing costs, she didn't understand the funding fee, she didn't. There's so many things, and when she wrote her first offer, I kid you not, Eric. I sent back no fewer than 10, just like, let me clean up your crap in this offer. (laughs) Like, that shouldn't be here. That shouldn't be here. What in the world does this even mean that you wrote off Mm -hmm. the regular language? Because, again, listeners, when we write anything 
off the standardized pre-made forms. Yeah, the boilerplate. We're held to the standard of an attorney. And this was a mess. It was a bloody mess. And I just was like, no, we're not doing And then she was attaching documents that don't belong in a contract. Mm-hmm. She just had no idea what she was, was doing. Is this a new, newer agent? She's brand new. But you know yeah. what? It's no better because here's the thing. You have – you just – Oh, you just have to ask the questions. You have to ask the tough questions because the other gal who wrote the second offer on it, she's not much better because I was commenting to her about like, well, this other gal can't do math. So I hope yours is going to be better. And so we were you know, joking. She goes, well, you know, I've only been doing it two years and it's, a, a, you know, it's a you know, later in life, you know, re- redo of my career. I've just always wanted to, you know, look at houses. And I'm like, oh, great. You're one of those two. <laughs> and the thing is, is. Real estate often is a second or third career for people, so I got no problem with that. It was for yeah, me too. I, sure. you know, I worked in tech for years before I got in. But the thing is, I knew what the hell I was doing when I got in. Mm-hmm. I researched it. I paid right. attention. I overextended you on had education. A business plan. I had a business plan. I knew what I was doing. And this, you know, this woman, she's like, I look at her offer, and she's she's asking me, well, how do I write this up? <sighs> I would have said, and, well, and the third well, first offer, of all, your price is way too high. <laughs> yeah, no, too, yeah, too low. Too low. <laughs> well, she did, she did at least tell me what some of the terms were going to be, and then I had to tell her, here's what you need to do for these elements of the offer. Please make sure you have this. Yeah. And, and it is a good business practice as a listing agent for someone to put that all together. In fact, here's what's mm-hmm. really funny. That Port Orchard house, we had roughly 16 uploaded documents mm-hmm. or so to yeah. go along with that, which, by the way, is quite a few. Um, and I've had numerous agents who are like, oh, oh my goodness, look at all the attachments you have here. I've never seen so many attachments. And it's like, yeah, because it's all the stuff that the owner has done to update the house. It's the septic system. It's information about the well. It's the legal. It's the form. It's, it's all the stuff you need and more so you know how to write a good offer. Well, there you go. So speaking of good offers, we got a guest coming up, and we're going to talk about what she's got to offer after the message is coming up here on Open House with Team Reba. Open House with Team Reba on AM 1590. The answer. Now back to Open House with Team Reba. Welcome back to Open House with Team Reba. I'm Eric Osnes from Homebridge Financial Home Mortgage. And I'm Reba Haas from Team Reba. And we're here every Saturday from 2 to 3 o'clock bringing mm-hmm. information on real estate and finance. And sometimes on Sundays as well from 3 to 4 p.m. And always on podcast. Yeah, baby. So Spotify, Stitcher. iTunes. iTunes. Buzzsprout. You know, Alexa yeah, like, knows about us. Yes, you can she ask does. Her, she knows. She's a smart lady. Yeah, Siri. That Alexa. She's, Siri's not quite as smart, but she might know. You, you know, can always ask her. Us. Yeah, she might. I don't have Siri, so I. Nor yeah. do I have Alexa. Oh, I do. I know yeah. you do. Yeah. yeah. That's how we found out she works. Alexa tells dad jokes every morning instead of an alarm clock. Are they better than yours? <laughs> no, they're horrible. <laughs> <laughs> they're really awful. <laughs> Yeah, but they make well, you then, laugh. That's well, the whole point. Then maybe they yeah. are like That's yours. That's the whole idea of a dad joke is they, they, they're so dumb. You just kind of, like, you don't uh, really laugh. You just sort of groan. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, that's, that's funny. That's the whole point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. All right. So you can just look us up. Yes. Open House with Team Reba. Yes. And there are nearly five years of content mm. on mm-hmm. there. We have yeah. about 180 plus shows right now. Right. That's a ton we're of content. Yeah. I know. Well, let's not say we're getting up there. I'm <laughs> trying to avoid that phrase. <laughs> but, but we need to plan a five-year, oh, some should. kind of celebration. Sort of a best, best of kind, kind of Kind of a thing. best of celebration. Yeah. I think that yeah. would be fun. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I think it'd be a good time. Yeah. And for those listeners who have only been listening to us here on AM 1590, The Answer, part of this is because prior to being on this station, we were on AM 1300. Yeah, KOL. Yes, KKOL. KKOL. And so that was one of the things we discovered was that, you know, we were there for like two, three years, and then they changed the station on us because Mm -hmm. of the tower move. Yeah, they knocked it down. Yeah, and so, like, our listenership has had to kind of rediscover us, Mm -hmm. right? It's a different group entirely, and some of our old listeners have found us. That's true. I was was just going to say, this new group, they're smart. Yeah, they're good. (laughs) 
<laughs> they are. They well, they've come to classes that we've done. They, they have. contact us. That's right. You've worked with people who've listened to the show, and that's so have right. I. Yeah, that's right. So we fact, welcome uh, that. Big big shout out to a um, uh, couple weeks ago. Uh, we had uh, Providence Elder Elder Place on. It was talking about their you know wonderful program, and they just had um, yeah, they that's just, an amazing program. They just had a referral uh, from that, and uh, which. Um, you know, it's super, super awesome. That makes so me happy because that somebody. program is super awesome. I mm -hmm. actually sent that to my family in other states because reminder to our listeners, if you go find that in our podcast and learn about the great services that Elder Place has available for people locally, um, that's a national program. It is. So it's worthwhile sharing with others that you know because a lot of our families aren't necessarily close to each other. So mm -hmm. it's it's great to share that information. Yeah, absolutely. Because I shared it with my family because my mom could yep. use those services. Right, but about our guest, I was actually yes. you know kind of thinking Some new services. I, I, that I you know kind of looking at my hair is thinking I need a little bit of a touch up, uh -huh. know, especially like on my neck. I think she could put a weave in. <laughs> Yeah. For you, <laughs> I, was, I was wondering. Although about I'm not a, sure what it will attach to. Yeah, <laughs> maybe I could kind of sport a ponytail or something like that. You know, oh, business good Lord. up front, party in the back. That's something that's like a that. mullet. Although if you yeah. do a ponytail, it's going to remind me of the 1990s and <laughs> you know software development. Well, but but we have but, yes, Minnie let's introduce Tefesa with us. Today. Yes, Minnie, who is the owner of Abyssinia Salon Beauty Clinic. Hello and welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> you're just you're looking at both of us like, what did I sign oh, up for? I get <laughs> no. Well, thank you for being here with us with our sneeze screen and everything else. Uh, we have for our listeners. She is wearing her mask. Mm. Her PPE is mm -hmm. in place. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're so thrilled to have a guest back on the show. So thank you for coming and being here today. Thank you. Thanks for having me here. Yeah. Well, and the, the reality is we actually had you scheduled pre-COVID. Long time. Yeah. Right. And we had to we had to postpone mm -hmm. till we could kind of get the approval to, to do this. Yes. Yep. And um, Minnie, do you want me to tell our listeners kind of how we know each other? Yes, or? please. Okay. All right. <laughs> no problem. I'm used to this. So many, many listeners to our show know that I'm involved in the Renton Chamber and I'm on the board of directors there, have been for six years now. And many is actually one of our most vocal and wonderful and welcoming ambassadors for okay. the chamber. She has done, and for many, how many years have you been in that role? Almost five years. Almost five wow. years. And so she's amazing. And it was funny because We've become friends now as well, but I remember going to an event like a summer or so ago, yeah. and she just lit up when I arrived, and I, he's like, we'd seen each other lots of times, and I finally, I, looked, I was like, I know we don't know each other that well, but why, why do you light up so much when <laughs> I... I like, do you do that with everyone, you know? And she's like, oh, no, you have no idea. Like, I just, and so here's the thing. We met prior to then and still sort of through the chamber because yeah. I had done a social media training probably five or six years ago. Five years. Yeah, five years ago for the chamber up in the Skyway area. Mm -hmm. And she was in attendance. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I was down at... Um, at the aerospace training, wasn't it? I think somewhere there, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was at uh, um, the aerospace training. Um, uh, Riddle, uh, I'm, I'm forgetting it. Ah. This, the, I think it was training and also um, something like, uh, I think basically it was, it was training. Yeah, it was a training yeah, center. Training yeah, center. yeah the, uh, I'm totally forgetting the name. Yeah. This is terrible because they've been a me chamber member for yeah. years. But uh, sorry, Dan Hammes, because um, that's where <laughs> he works. But um, they, they train pilots. Oh, so okay. anyway, you're, right. at, you're at these desks, and everyone has laptops in front of them. And I was doing a social media training because mm -hmm. I've been doing, as you know, right. social media All over for it. 17 plus years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so Minnie was in that class and it was only supposed to be an hour, it ended up going to two hours. And here she was telling me many years later, she's like, I have been following you all these years. Yes. And she goes, and I've been borrowing your techniques and mm -hmm. they work. Oh, that's awesome. And yeah. so- yep. That's one of the things that's really fantastic. So now I will, you know, I will say, listeners, I am now a client of Minnie's. I wasn't for a very long time. I already had a different person I was going to. 
And then th- some things happen. And I told Minnie, I said, you know, here's, here's the thing that I have as a requirement for me as someone that I go to have cut my hair. Um, because I don't get hair colors or any of that stuff. Because my, my natural hair color is Amazing. awesome. Yeah. yeah, it's awesome. And I don't want anyone to touch it. Um, however, um, I was telling Minnie, I'm like, I, I used to see this lady that I would walk out and I'm just like tossing my hair around. I'm like, look at my mane. <laughs> you know, and she made me feel so good. And I said, I'd been looking and looking and looking for someone who made me feel like that again. And I said, and the gal that I've been going to in Bellevue for a while, like, no, it was, it was kind of there, but then it was like after a while, people kind of get, sure, uh, you know, they get, get uh, you know, a little and more lackluster. That'll, that'll be two hundred fifty dollars, please. Yeah, well, and they just, you know, sometimes they just get kind of bored or tired. I guess I don't know what it is, mm. but I will tell you. Uh, so, I decided I'm like I'm going to try mini, and I went down. I've now I had my hair cut there several times. And every time I walk out of there, I'm like I was before, where I'm tossing my hair like a, you know, like a horse glinting in well, the sun wonderful. with their so, mane. <laughs> Minnie, tell, tell us about your salon. Uh, Abyssinia Hair and Beauty Clinic is a multi-texture and multicultural kind of approach we have, mm-hmm. and uh, because we uh, handle everybody's hair, okay, and we welcome everyone um, at the same manner. Yeah, and so this is this is key. I believe, and one of the things I thought was really fun about having her on the show Mm -hmm. was because there's a lot of folks, and and I'll I'll say this from some personal experience from the standpoint of like my, you know, one of my ex-husbands was Asian, Mm -hmm. and it's a very certain kind of coarseness and thickness of hair, Mm -hmm. and I remember conversations with Ed about, hey, I need to find somebody who can cut my hair because I can't just have anyone cut it, Mm -hmm. right? And the same, you know, conversation about black hair, yeah. right, mm-hmm. is also very different. Mm-hmm. And so, like, when a, a white friend of mine had adopted a little boy, Rick Hayes, who's on mm-hmm. our team and is black, had, had gone to her and said, do you know how to handle his skin and his hair? And she had no idea, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So there's very specific things around all of that. And, and I love it because your salon really, really does speak to everybody. Yeah. How, do you, how do you train your staff then? Because that, that seems like that would take a, a much higher degree of skill than your typical, you know, exactly. you know person. Um, for me, I was just fortunate uh, to travel different countries and to experience with different kind of texture. Mm-hmm. Uh, being a black person, it doesn't mean that you know the you know how to do black hair. Sure. You know. Right. But the culture when I moved in here. Um, I, you know, I visited different kind of uh, hair salons. So uh, black only caters for black and mm-hmm. white like that and Asian. So I had um, a good opportunity like to mm-hmm. fill the gap. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. By having everyone in one spot. Kind of one, sp- yeah. one, place. one place. Well, and especially like, you know, you started off in Renton. Yeah. And Renton has one of the highest multicultural, yep. you know, kind of um in the nation population yeah, yeah in, the nation. in the nation yeah. Yeah. and so you yeah. really were helping provide you know this filling of the gap yeah. i think yeah and w- but here's the other thing in the name is the beauty clinic mm-hmm. yeah so g- can you tell us a little what? bit about Why? your background because yeah. you when i got to sit down with you over coffee yeah <laughs> i learned so many fascinating things about you you're a yeah. fascinating woman yeah so t- tell us some of that background. Uh, so the reason we call it uh, we call it uh, clinic is um, I trained in France, uh, Paris, uh, a product called Ericsson Laboratoire, mm-hmm. and the Ericsson Laboratoire. When I signed the contract with them, it's just only for um, you know clinical approach. We only sell. In the pharmacy, and also uh, trained hairstylist. Mm-hmm. We don't just sell for the, the sake of selling products. So sure. that really um, made me to change the from the salon to clinic, because the approach is, of course, it's clinical, and we don't really give a hair uh, cut without s- examining the scalp condition and also the hair condition, and uh, that is a clinical approach. Yeah. And uh, when you go to the hair salon, it's not only to do your hair or to wash your hair. It's also um, uh, releasing tensions. Mm-hmm. So, again, the clinical approach is by touching those pressure points 
and um, you know uh, handling the the tension at the moment. It's not only like I said. Haircut. I see. So yes. that might explain a lot of your hair loss. <laughs> is all that tension <laughs> that you're doing on a regular basis? I didn't say that. <laughs> We're going to have to go and do a break, and this is a good time for that because I'm looking at your face right now. <laughs> so if you have tension to relieve, now is a good time to do that. So <laughs> we're going to be right back on Open House with Team Reba right after these brief messages. So with stay Minnie tuned. Tifate. We'll be right back. <laughs> Open House with Team Reba on AM 1590. The Answer. Now, back to Open House with Team Reba. Welcome back to Open House with Team Reba. I'm Reba Hassett, Team Reba, Remax Metro East Side. I'm almost afraid <laughs> to give my name now after that last segment. But uh, this I'm is, Tension Eric. This is Eric Osnes <laughs> from Homebridge Financial. And <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes. You're such a good sport. You're a good sport. Uh, I have to say being that. Being in mortgage lending for over 30 years yes. can cause the odd bit of stress. Yeah, you know, I, but, hey, you know, I, I feel you, buddy. It's, I feel you. <laughs> so, so fortunately for us, Trust though, me, when I went down and saw Minnie the first time, she was like, what is up with your scalp? <laughs> I'm like, it's like uh-huh. oh, I keep meaning to come back to you and well, ask what I need to do because okay, that, I, I'm gonna, important. I'm going to hit you with a question in a minute here, but uh, just we have uh, with us Minnie Tefessa who is the owner of Absentia Hair... Uh, no, Abyssinia. Abyssinia <laughs> Hair Clinic. See, it's like Absentia. No, that's I not know, right. I know, that's Abyssinia. not right. Abyssinia. No, Abyssinia <laughs> Hair Clinic. Yes. And and uh, so we want to learn more about you, uh, Minnie, and kind of your background. So uh, before the break, you were talking about, uh, you know, you, you received some training in Paris, yeah. you know, for your, for your training, but you also have a clinic in Kenya. Yeah. And... So, so tell us, tell us more. I want to know more about that. Uh, Abyssinia started in year two thousand, uh, June, mm-hmm. and in Kenya, Nairobi, and um, uh, just we started a small salon, and you know, I'm by myself. And uh, later on, I convinced my sister to come and join me. And then, after a couple of years, two thousand three, I start traveling to France, different countries, in different mm-hmm. European countries. That's how I acquired uh, different uh, techniques and um, expertise. Yeah. And uh, training is uh, like you see and learn, and it's all about passion as well. It's not really, you know, uh, just to make money. <laughs> sure. Well, yeah. and it takes that, that creativity and that knowledge of what you're doing and, and everything else that, um, you know, not everybody has. Uh, you know, I've even even me with my extremely easy you know, situation. It's, yes. It seems like yeah. I've gone into a, you know, I don't want to mention names like, mm-hmm. you know, Supercuts or anything like that. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> you know, or it's like, how can you mess up this? I mean, it's, you know, well, okay, put so a bowl on my head. I'm not saying when. I'm good to go. I will say, okay, because we know that I'm dating, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah the so world I actually, yeah. well, you know, getting to the end of the, <laughs> you know, COVID, you know, cutoffs, uh, I, I sent three dates to her. <laughs> <laughs> really? I, it's like, all right. I before, kid you not. Was this before or I after? No, this is before. Way too much. So no, no, before, no. Before even she sees them, she sends the client yeah. to be like, the room, like, you know? They're like, I have COVID <laughs> hair, and I, you want me to come meet you? Like, and I'm like, no. Yeah, I'm like, check, that's fine. I'm check like, them for I'm ticks like, also? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, no. I mean, this is not a normal thing, but it was. No, it, we re- <laughs> we recognize this. Yeah. But no, because the, these guys are like, oh god, yeah, I like oh, I want to meet you, but my hair, and uh, I'm like, well, now you understand how women feel when we're having a bad hair day, yep. you know. And I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, in my mind, I'm thinking of the movie The Big Lebowski, and you know, <laughs> to see the doctor. He's very thorough, you know. So, yeah, you know, before I date you, I need you to go see Minnie. She's very thorough. <laughs> Oh my gosh! But yeah. no, it was it was actually that really was funny. funny. But but your comment about these discount places, I can tell you for a fact, these fellas after the fact, like I you know I'd get a chance to meet them, and they're like, I don't think I'm ever going back to that place again. She's great, and that's I'm like, awesome. I know oh, she is great. That's good. Well, okay, so this is the thing. Part of why Minnie's on here is, of course, we're you know I'd love it if people go see Minnie, but here's the thing, she's got this great talent, and a franchisable business. Mm. 
And that's mm-hmm. why she's here on the show today because, you know, what we talk about is not just real estate and mortgage and all things related, but we've had other kinds of business owners on here. Mm-hmm. You know, and we're always talking about, you know, helping the economy and having a robust economy. Mm-hmm. And, you know, yes, were people in, you know, the hairdressing industry and beauty industry impacted during, you know, all the shutdowns? Absolutely. However, it's still a necessary, you know, business. Yeah. And, you know, she, uh, Minnie, you you started franchising how long ago? Uh, we started 2018, and then that uh, end of that year, I lost my dad, so I, we couldn't okay. continue. Mm-hmm. And then after some time, like, you know, we picked from 2019 mm-hmm. towards the end of 2019. And then when we are most, uh, you know, being, you know, aggressive and mm-hmm. marketing, 2020 came and, uh, boom, yeah. you know. But then I, t- I said this, mm, the this COVID incident mm-hmm. or whatever yeah. we have is opened my eyes and also I'm um, on in the right, you know, industry because it's really, really essential. It's yeah. so very important. Yeah. And then once we open back to, you know, like the Oh, I'm sure you business, were booked I, wall to wall. I'm telling you from 6 a.m. Wow. Yeah, she was doing yeah. me a favor Six when I was like, hey, this wow. guy yeah. needs a cut. Yep. <laughs> yeah. 6 a.m. We started, we yeah. know, we normally open at 10, mm-hmm. but because now it's majority, like 60, 70% of our clients mm-hmm. after COVID, it's all new clients. Mm-hmm. Oh, and wow. I, I know. Uh, that's amazing. That's a tremendous com- growth. Completely. And, you know, like then we can, you know. Do you know why that is? I think most salons are closing down and some hairstylists, unfortunately, they don't go back to work because, mm-hmm. right. you know, they, this um, unemployment and extra mm-hmm. $600 right. they right. give. Uh, that Maybe they were making yes, more money that yes, way. Yes, they, yeah. do, they do. But unfortunately, that cannot really build or build our uh, economy. Yeah. Right. Well, but, okay, right. so you, you hit the nail right where I'm always talking about real estate. Mm-hmm. Just because someone's in an industry does not mean they're going to be well suited yep. to their industry. Exactly. And I will say every single thing I've ever seen about your salon and every comment, like if I get on your website, AbyssiniaWa.com, people, the rave reviews, I know I'm one of those people. I jump on social media because I'm walking out of there, you know, shaking my you know head yeah. like a horse mane, you know, <laughs> like, look at me, you know, and and, and people comment on my hair all the time. Yeah. Even when I'm weeks into it, yeah. they're like, oh, my God, your hair looks so good today. I'm like, because I got a really good cut. Yeah. I got a really good cut. Like, when it can grow out and still look good weeks later, mm-hmm. it's amazing. And, you know, and I have um, what I wouldn't consider, like, super difficult hair. But mine, it, mine is hard from the standpoint of I have a fair amount of it, but it's really fine. And it's also naturally curly. And it's hard for someone, if they're not used to working with curly hair, to actually make it look good in its natural state. So a yeah. lot of um, people in a salon will just do a blowout with my hair, which, yeah, I look fine the day I leave, but the minute that I get moisture in the air, which is, duh, around here a lot, mm-hmm. yeah. then, you know, I look like a wreck. Boils up like a spring. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. It, and it doesn't look like a good so, spring. Yeah. So, many what uh, you, you kind of mentioned that, that your your salon is multicultural, multi, and you mentioned multi-texture. Yeah. And how do you... How do you market that? So if you're looking at, you've got a franchise opportunities, how do you differentiate yourself from the, you know, from all the other salons out there? Uh, just like Riva mentioned that our, you know, people come uh, from Googling us, you mm-hmm. know, like uh, social media is one of our uh, mm-hmm. means. Mm-hmm. And also the, we have Instagram, we have Facebook. Mm-hmm. Uh, Your Instagram posts are yeah. phenomenal. If uh, listeners, if you haven't been on Instagram lately, what, what's your handle on? Abyssinia underscore hair underscore and beauty. Okay. Yeah. She has great video clips of her actually in action working on someone's hair. But uh, adding to that is I learned from the best. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I learned from her. <laughs> well, okay. No, seriously. I well, the social from media, yeah, but the social I can't media. haircut. No, so. no. <laughs> I learned the social media posting is I grew is just after watching her video all the time. So yeah. I learned from that. That's, well, and, that's and you're in an industry that actually benefits from that because it oh, yeah. is one of those, oh, like yeah. you can see the before and after just directly. Like, you know, what I do, it takes months to get through the process with somebody, right? Mm-hmm. So for me to create that, I, I have to like phase in mm-hmm. or 
to remember to do photos and whatever to stitch something together. But she'll be doing, you know, like within and after, yeah. 30 minutes, the yeah. before and after, before or and just after. even watching you yeah. cut. Yeah, before and after. pretty amazing. And, and also and the, the colors. The color. The color, I am, I'm very, you know, I love. I love chemistry, so. <laughs> yeah, that's the other thing. So, like, the science behind it. Yeah. Oh, big time. Right? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. And, and in fact, actually, in your industry, you guys, this is the scary thing for you listeners. Your industry requires more credit hours for a renewal of your license than my business yes, does. it does. How it, many hours do you guys have to do? 1,600 hours. Really? Yes. And you have to take more hours mm-hmm. to cut someone's hair. Yeah. Then be a real estate agent. Because it yes. does. It's science. And listeners, it's 90 yeah, you're hours. You're absolutely right. Yeah. It, it, it's uh, mm-hmm. behind all this is science. You know, you have right. to know the, you know, the fair s- structure and also yeah. the scalp condition, the hair condition, um, the hair follicle, you know, the papilla, everything. You know, it's yeah. not only, that's just only to deal with the hair. Yeah. But to do, to deal with the color, you have to know chemistry. You know, it's sure. just mm-hmm. all about, you know, Because you can burn somebody. Exactly. Oh, so sure. Yeah. That's, you know, hair, hair industry. What's is your most really challenging good. client you've ever had? Oh, uh, boy. Uh, that is um, a bald guy. <laughs> There's nothing to do. No, no, no. <laughs> it's, I'm just teasing. It's, you. I, I, te- I, I tell you, um, you know the um, the black hair. You know, I'm black, and my you know I I try to cut my brother's hair. Yeah. So he says, okay, uh, make me line in the, the oh mouth. the lines yeah the lines yeah. oh yeah. my god I yeah. don't know, I don't know how to do that I'm, I'm, I'm really <laughs> like I'm trying. That's yeah. my challenge. So, uh, you know, that's, um, you know. Right, but the chemistry and everything else, because, like, I mean, that's the whole thing is, like, color is such a popular thing. Yeah. Straightening, sometimes yeah. using straightening products. Yeah. I mean, I remember watching the movie Good Hair yeah. that I was stunned <laughs> when I saw for... Oh, curly to straight. Yeah. 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 I mean, I have naturally curly hair, but not the same as black hair. Yeah. And what the chemicals were that they yeah. were talking about in that movie... Yeah. I was I was shocked. Yeah, they have like I really have, learned something. We have a texture like uh, you know uh, relaxer, and mm-hmm. we have also uh, Brazilian blood. Yeah, Brazilian and that, that I do is, know yeah. is used on all kinds of textures because yeah. the gal who used to be my massage therapist, yeah. she was like me, fair skin, yeah. red hair, and yeah. she had that done. That Brazilian blood is the you know very a little bit complex. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we it, it but that's because that's one that lasts for a long time. Three months, yeah, three months around three months. Okay, even relaxer for curly hair, just like my kind of hair, mm-hmm. uh, lasts like you know two three months. Okay, so kind of like having a regular hair yeah, color yeah. or a permanent the, the or something. C- the, yeah, it's the same. Okay, the same, yeah. All right, so so tell me more about the the franchise, franchise. opportunities though, the because that's or actually we might have to do that in the next. Segment. Yeah, we just got to take a real quick break yeah. here. So let us do it because I want to make sure we get to the details. Gotcha. You bet. Well, thank you. We've got Minnie Tefessa on and learning more about her franchise opportunities with Absinia. So stay tuned. we got more Open House with Team Reba in just a minute. Open House with Team Reba on AM 1590. The answer. Now back to Open House with Team Reba. Welcome back to Open House with Team Reba. I'm Eric Osnes from Homebridge Financial Home Mortgage. And I'm Reba Hass from Team Reba. And Reba, if somebody wants to reach out to you and they have a question, how do they get to hold of you? They can. If it's a general question, you can get a hold of me and my team at info at teamreba.com. If it's a private request, reba at teamreba.com. And if you want to get me on the phone or by text, 206-910-3429. Awesome. Hey, you remembered your phone number this time. I did because I'm used to giving your number out. (laughs) (laughs) Which, if you want to reach me, you can call me. It's 206-915-ERIC, 206-915-3742. Or you can also email me anytime, Eric, that's E-R, Eric with a C, at ericismybanker.com. All right. Yeah. Well, speaking of contact information, because we're going to get into some more of the franchise information here, though, but Minnie, why don't you share with our listeners um, how someone can reach you? Uh by phone number or whatever is the whatever the normal way or preferred way is that you would like uh we have like uh, the company's email Mm -hmm. mini at abyssiniabeautyclinic.com or mini nishu my full name at healthmile.com okay Uh, and we'll have that tied to the show as well mini is spelled m-i-n-y yes okay m-i-n-y at at M-I-N-Y-S-H-U at hotmail.com or mini, M-I-N-Y, 
at abyssiniabeautyclinic.com. And telephone is 425-255-0385 or text and um, call 425-429-8241. I okay. could listen to you yeah. read the phone book. I know. Doesn't <laughs> she have the most beautiful voice? <laughs> I love talking to her. <laughs> Thank Absolutely. you. Yeah. Oh, it's Thank just you. so melodic. I am not that. But <laughs> no. <laughs> I know. I'm just no. not. Even though I sing, I just i am not yeah. melodic when you I talk. Do, you know how to project those. You've got that. Thing. Well, yeah. that's mm-hmm. you know, where singing comes in and things like this. Okay. But let's get back to your franchise opportunities. Yeah. So what does it so if somebody was to reach out to you like what should they anticipate or what are you looking for in a franchise individual to franchise the Abyssinia hair and beauty clinic it's very easy just look for existing hair salon and um, which has everything it's easy to come in there and uh, just to have some interior correcting or uh, you know the color scheme mm-hmm. and all that and you, you're good to go. It's very so easy, and we train you. Okay, so th- so what you're talking about when, when find because you were just mentioning one of the things that's happening right now in this industry is many shops are closing, right? And so they are maybe primed for that landlord to get a new tenant, and, yep. they, and they'd probably be thrilled because yes. usually when a commercial landlord has, a, you know, a strip mall or what have you. Uh, you're trying to get a good mix yeah. of who's there. Like right now you're next to a Safeway and some restaurants and yeah. some other things. So there's a mix of good walking by traffic, yeah. drive by traffic. So yeah. there's, there's that uh, wonderful blend that can yeah. maybe bring some walk-in business to you as well as being visible, exactly. right? For yeah. branding and all of that. Yeah. Um, but what we're talking about is that, you know, you're talking tenant improvements, yeah. right? So when you're signing a lease, it's important for a potential business owner to be able to negotiate tenant yeah. improvements potentially within the lease. Yeah. Right. And then, um, outside of that, then you also from the actual within the business yeah. are doing training. Yeah. We okay. Do, we do training and also we help you to identify and see the correct, the right location for the business mm-hmm. and the small, you know, like this next to Safeway or, um, you know, small, um, market, Mm-hmm. area mm-hmm. is uh, very idle and Abyssinia is pretty known the name is already built mm-hmm. so if you go to um, Federal Way we have you know uh, clients coming from there and mm-hmm. different direction right, Bel- right. yeah Bel- so you're Bel- looking at the demographics yeah. of your clients yeah. and saying we want to come to you exactly that's and which is a thing. smart business plan yeah um, because that's where a lot of them you know really come from is you know Ikea knows where all of its busy, you know, yeah. business is coming from. However, they build themselves on just being a sole location, yeah. right? Yeah. But other retail that is like of your type, you know, or service industry yeah. really needs to be where the customer is because that is one of the things yeah. about also coming to you. Not only do you do a great cut, but you're close to me. Yeah. I was driving to Burien. I went to Bellevue. I was going to Seattle. I was going to all these different places. Yeah. And I had tried places in Renton. And so you get the trifecta for me of, you know, I like your prices, I love the cut that you do, and you're convenient for me. Yeah. And so what you're trying to do is say, hey, we've got a brand name, we can teach the people the skill, and bring the business to you. To you. Well, exactly. and as a franchisee, if I'm thinking of mm-hmm. starting my own salon, let's say, and if I'm trying to do that all by myself, and hire, and mm-hmm. yeah. run the business, uh, the lot. marketing yeah. you know, falls falls by the wayside or many people who might be very good at their craft they can yeah. mm-hmm. cut hair like it's nobody's business but they yeah. don't know anything about marketing exactly. or running a business yeah. And, yeah. and that's the probably one of the number one reasons that uh, a startup business fails yeah. you know is because mm-hmm. they just don't know about that business aspect of yes. of developing the business so yeah. I, I like that idea you've got somebody you you know you they they find the the right building it's already got the chairs and the the infrastructure which i imagine is yeah. somewhat similar from salon to salon yeah. but you're going to come in with your own look and your colors yeah. and and all of that and uh so then and then they're already on the bandwagon with the with your social media and with your marketing yeah uh, so that kind of helps with all with all of that as well yeah. yeah that's awesome yeah and it's important sometimes to find those salons where you don't have to do a lot of extra to um mm-hmm. tenant improvements because 
Yeah, you, know, you do have the extra things like all of the drains yeah. and sinks and things like that, yeah. right? Which are not in typical build outs, yeah. no. right? No. It's like, kind of like restaurants. You don't expensive. always have hoods. Yeah. Right, expensive. exactly. They yeah, are. For instance, the current Avicinia where I am now, is I took it from, um, it used to be her master. Okay. And I took it from there. So it's, yeah. what, mm -hmm. you know, I just spent maybe around 30000 Okay. Nothing that's a fraction of what yeah, it would normally just cost amazing. to build it's out. It's just easy to do the business. And yeah. then the mm -hmm. training will give your stylist training. You don't have to mm -hmm. be a hairstylist mm -hmm. to run a business, to be right. the, fr the next franchisee. Mm -hmm. You just need to be our business partner. That's it. I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and that's one of the things is that it's, the person isn't standalone, right? Like you're still working with them yeah. throughout all oh this yeah, throughout. and helping create, like, here's all the systems and procedures. Yep. I mean, that's the whole point of doing that's franchise. Exactly, yeah. And also, you know, we need the, our brand to be succeed. So right. we work together. We are just mm -hmm. now one big mm -hmm. family. Yeah. And you're, you're not only doing the, or running your own business. It's just our partner, business partners. Mm -hmm. We are business partners mm -hmm. and we make sure that, you will invest in the next, you know, like maybe you'll you'll invest in ten five um, units. That's mm -hmm. what we need. That's what we are. Right. It's like somebody owning a bunch of Dairy Queens. Yeah. It's yeah. You know, or some other similar type of thing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. You can do yeah. it in all all yeah. manner of those. I mean, I know yeah. people who own gas stations, and they're not the ones who run them. They yeah. just. You don't have to be a hairstylist, yeah, but right. you right. need to be a manager. Which is why you keep asking me about exactly. it. Exactly, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And she can be a good, you know, like, investor. But, uh, w yeah, we are looking for investors, and um, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. not only um, the investors. Is they are just only, uh, you know, investing on the, the company, mm -hmm. and the rest is, um, you know, we will do the rest. I mean, like, training the stylist. And if they have, like, with the Avicinia, uh, w the way I created, uh, it's just easy. One person can, or two person, two, two stylists can make easily uh, over 1,500 a day. Holy cow. Just easy, mm -hmm. because uh, the way I create um, and the way I trained, mm -hmm. I trained globally. And mm -hmm. I have all the system, you know, yeah, you yeah. Know, to be effective and to bring the result, but then you don't have to sweat. You don't have to I work see. hard that, that well, you know, the whole day to, cl to color somebody's hair. The key is mm -hmm. you've got to have yeah. the bottoms in the seats, though, to, yeah. to make yeah. that all happen. And that comes yeah. back to marketing. and Just Right. Easy. Yeah. 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 And yeah. when you're good at what you do, it that's what shows up at the salons. I'm telling you, you know, yeah. in a day, like I have uh, my one assistant only, and I make 1,500 mm -hmm. in most of mm -hmm. the time. So... It's just mm -hmm. easy. Th yeah. That's how we wanted the other Avicinia franchisee to mm -hmm. be more effective like that. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to have like 10 stylists in yeah. your salon, you know, to make that much. Because mm -hmm. it's just good quality service and with good quality product, that's what we offer. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's, that's the big difference is that most salons are that. They're like renting space to yeah. independent contractors. And so there's not that consistency, consistency. across it all. Well, Minnie, we loved having you on today and hope Thank you, you can join us again in the future. I think I'm thinking yes. of a gift certificate I might have thank to you so uh, much. invest yes, in here. I would agree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you all for listening. Hope that was uh, worth your time this Killed afternoon. Your hair. That's right. Well, have a great weekend, everyone. Thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to Open House with Team Reba. To contact us, visit Team Reba at Remax Metro Eastside on Facebook or email info at teamreba.com. Join us again next Saturday afternoon at 2 for more Open House with Team Reba here on AM 1590. The answer. The preceding program was sponsored by Team Reba of Remax Metro East Side and Eric Osnes of Homebridge Financial Services.